Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Brittany. I don't really know where I'm going with this video, but I have some stuff that I wanna talk about and I'm just gonna get right into it. If you watched my last video, it had been a little while since I had posted a video and in that video, I said that I wanted to get back onto a consistent schedule because I absolutely love filming and editing. I love the connections that I've formed through this. I love that it gives me something to do and look forward to while being a stay-at-home mom. I love making vlogs so we can go back and look at them throughout the year, see how much we've grown and changed as a family. And yeah, it's just really fun to be making videos. So yeah, like I said in my last video that I posted, I'll link it right here in case you guys wanna go check that out. Um, I have said, I had said that I want to be consistent with filming and posting and that video was uploaded on May 6th so it has been two months since then and I have not picked up the camera. I literally had to wipe dust off of it. But today I got ready, I did my hair, put on makeup, and I'm feeling good today. So I wanted to pick up the camera, chat with you guys a little bit, tell you what's been going on and why I haven't been motivated to film. Okay, so where do I begin? As you know, the climate of the world has just been insane lately. Oh my God, am I already gonna tear up? Oh, I was not expecting to get emotional this soon into the video. Okay, as I was trying to say, as you guys know, there is a lot going on in the world right now, starting from the beginning of this year with COVID-19. I know that took a toll on everybody. And then the more recent events of the George Floyd's death, I'm sorry, not death, murder. And with that igniting the flame for the Black Lives Matter movement to go in full force, if you didn't know or you can't tell, I am mixed. My dad is black and my mom is white. So, oh my gosh, okay, I'm going to try and keep it together. I'm going to be 26 in a couple of weeks and I am fortunate enough to have never struggled with my mental health like so many people do, so many people I know, love, and care about do. And that has just never been something to affect me. But these past few months have really taken a toll on me like they have so many other people. I know I'm not alone in the way I'm feeling, and I know there's so many of you out there that are feeling the same way, and I just wanna be open and let you guys know that you're not alone, especially if you're like me and have never felt this way before. Okay, I can't seem to keep it together, so I don't even know if this video is gonna go up. This may just be wasted time, wasted footage, um, but, but if you're watching it, apparently I was able to get it together and okay, let's continue. Really haven't talked about this with anybody. So I know a lot of people, a lot of friends and family, if you're watching this right now, um, this is something, this is new news to you. I haven't expressed my um, feelings on this topic very strongly other than obvious posts on social media and um, I shared a few stories of my personal run-ins with like racism, etc. I, I know a lot of people don't um, realize that I don't realize how big of a toll this has actually been taking on me. Um, it is very overwhelming. It is so incredible to see how many people are coming together during this time in supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, being an ally, spreading awareness, donating. Like, it is incredible. There has never been a movement like this, this strong, this big. People from all over the world are joining in on this. It is absolutely amazing. With that said, I live in a predominantly white town and, and I am on too much social media. I know I need to take a break from that because it's really wearing on me, but um, we have a community Facebook page and the amount of people who are so vocally against BLM and think that 
racism doesn't exist anymore or they are so naive to the fact that black people or people of color are treated differently like like it's been proven time and time again that people of color are treated differently i know there has been so many cases of police brutality against people of color brought to light especially in the past few years with people getting it on camera and whatnot but like me and so many other people Ahmaud arbery and george floyd's deaths being caught on camera shook me to my core it shook the whole world and yeah, it has just been a very overwhelming time for me and so many people in the world. So many of you. And it's just crazy how this fight has taken such a toll on my mental health. It's like I'm hardly motivated to do anything. I don't want to clean. I don't want to cook. I don't want to go shopping. I've been doing the bare minimum with being a mom. It's just been tough. Today is the first day I put makeup on in weeks. I want to share something with you guys that I shared on social media last month. I know um, a lot of you do follow me on Instagram, but there's a good amount of people who don't, especially for any new viewers. If you're new to the channel, um, this is just something I want to share with you guys. So, okay. So this is what I wrote. I said, this entire George Floyd tragedy has been bringing up many suppressed feelings from my childhood. For the record, I had a great childhood overall, a great home life. I was very loved, had everything I wanted and needed. This is heartbreaking and embarrassing to admit, but bear with me. I feel like I need to do my part in spreading awareness as a mixed person of color. I've never talked about this with anyone until tonight. I'm sure a majority of you on my friends list thought I've never had to deal with racism or what comes with being black in America. But the silence ends now. Even though my stories aren't as tragic as millions of other people of color, I feel the urge to share. When I was nine, I moved to a predominantly white town I had not one brown friend and I remember there being one other black girl at my school and that was it. At nine years old, I learned to be embarrassed of being black. I went as far as telling everyone that I was Hawaiian because I didn't want to admit that I was half black. At nine years old, I had already known I would be looked at differently because of the color of my skin, because of the awful stereotypes that come along with being black. Getting... <clears throat> Getting to middle school, I got teased about the color of my skin, about my curly hair. I got asked if the bumps on my arms, I have keratosis players on my arms. I got asked if those were because I was black. I got called the N word on multiple occasions from little teenage boys. In eighth grade, I got a voicemail from a group of girls that wanted to beat me up because I was a N word. And other terrible things about being black that my brain has apparently chosen to forget because they are very vague memories as of today. I didn't have many friends and I always wondered if it was because of the color of my skin. High school wasn't much better until senior year when I finally felt comfortable being the black girl. Well, half black, but let's face it, when you are in a predominantly white area, you're just seen as black. I was finally happy being the black Britney as there were many Britneys at my school. I remember the actual day, which was my last day of senior year, all eight, eight of the black and mixed kids got together and took a picture and it felt like we all mattered. I felt excited to be black. I felt special. In my adult life, I've learned to embrace it. I've learned to love being half black. I don't want to hide it like I used to. With that said, I still encounter racism. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I got pulled over for the first and only time. I was told there were car thefts in the area and I looked suspicious. I don't know how me, a pregnant 20 year old, looks suspicious driving a car other than for the color of my skin. At my old workplace, we would take out customers' purchases for them. I worked at a pet store and we would carry out like big bags of dog food or whatnot. And this older white lady said, come on slave. I could go on with stories, but I'm going to leave it at that. I am so honored to have such amazing people in my life who have been standing up and helping the voices of people of color be heard. My Facebook feed is filled with support and it makes me hopeful for the future. So that was just a small snippet of something I shared on my social media. 
So yeah, ending this topic, I encourage you all who are watching this to do your part. Be an ally, donate your time, use your social media platform to continue to spread awareness. Don't let this go silent, we're not done yet. You never know who you are going to inspire to change their outlook, open their eyes, educate themselves on all of the social injustices that are happening right under their noses and educate them on ways that they can help. I'm going to leave a few links down in the description down below on ways that you can help educate yourself, fight for justice, and so much more. There are still so many people staying silent and it's time for everybody to just get it together, wake up, realize that this is real. You need to realize that this is not a moment, this is a movement, and you're either with us or you're not, and if you're not with us, you're against us. Okay, part two. So in addition to everything I just talked about, my fiance Shane and I are supposed to be getting married on August 22nd of this year. And as you know, COVID-19 is not going away anytime soon. Things are getting worse. Cases are going up thousands by the day. And it's just really concerning for our wedding. As of right now, everything is still on track, but I just have been feeling like that can change on any day. COVID has just put such a damper on our whole wedding like experience, like the planning of it and everything. I'm just so uncertain of how it's going to go. Um, we already have family members that are weary of coming. So we only have like seven weeks left until our wedding and I am just so like terrified that it's not gonna go as planned. I mean, we're already having to make a few changes. We're going to be providing masks and it's going to be hot and uncomfortable for people and that makes me sad. I don't know, I don't know. We're still just, we're still hoping for the best. My bachelorette party was planned for next weekend. Uh, we are still going on it, but we had to cancel like a lot of the stuff we were going to do. We were going to go wine tasting in Napa, but um, although their wineries are still open, I don't feel comfortable going because we have been social distancing as best as possible and I just don't feel like that's a good environment to go to with the virus. We were going to go to like a nail salon and get our nails and toes done and that's just not going to happen. So we are just going to go to our Airbnb and spend time there. We, we're gonna make the best of it. It's still gonna be fun. I'm still so excited for that. I know a lot of people have had to cancel their weddings this year and that just breaks my heart for everybody who has had to do so. So I am thankful that as of now, we are still able to go through with our wedding. It's just been a really tough, overwhelming few months. I haven't had the motivation to do literally anything. I haven't been motivated to clean, to cook, to go shopping, like even grocery shopping. Um, to hang out with friends, see people. It's even though that's hard to do right now anyways. A few times I have seen friends, we have social distanced. I've been eating like crap. I, I have a wedding dress to fit into in seven weeks. And I'm pretty sure I'm a size or two bigger than I was when I got fitted for the dress. So that might be an issue. So I think with both of those things together, my mental health is starting to take a toll. I don't even know what area of mental health I would really like fit into with um, what I'm struggling with right now, if that makes any sense. Um, but I know things will get better. Um, but here I am, I just wanted to share that with you guys and just wanted to let you know if you are going through a similar type of thing that you are not alone. And I know I'm not alone. Um, but it does help to hear from other people. I just want to thank you so much for watching if you have made it to the end of this and you are not subscribed and you like this video or our other videos, please go ahead and subscribe. I am so excited to continue growing this channel. I've made a lot of connections through this channel alone. I really want to be more consistent on here. Like I said, I love filming, I love editing, I love doing it. So fresh start now and I'll see you in the next video.